this was a tool in which to help regulate that. If and when. That. Absolutely. Well, if and when, absolutely. It has to be in place, yes. Correct. I just, um, I'm glad to see Allison supporting this idea of a uh, enforcement yeah. policy. I don't know very much about them and whether the fine we, schedule. We have one for bylaws now. Yeah. yeah. I, I just mean the concept in general. Yeah. Um, whether that would be where a fine schedule would be or whether that would be a separate bylaw that came later. And, um, uh, but we could um, add another recommendation or something to think about. We could pass something that said, um, and that staff report on the value of, or the feasibility of an enforcement policy. So. Okay. I'm going to go to Maureen. Some, some of these issues um, are going to land in the lap of a person who will be starting work on this in, uh, if, assuming it goes forward, uh, in October, November, December. And the communications strategy has been conceived as um, picking up steam uh, after the bylaw has been passed, in part because the consultation with the community has been over a two-year period in the um, economic development summits that we've held and also in the business breakfasts. Um, so some of the objections that are, are coming forward at this time are, um, they're, they're late objections in terms of moving forward with this. There are some concerns expressed in some of the correspondence about the bylaw lacking um, certain things. And a few of the points were, um, something has been identified as being lacking, is that they're dealt with, concerns are dealt with in other contexts. Uh, for example, um, John Dowler brought up the, um, you know, what is the purpose? The purpose of business licenses, that's stated in higher level legislation. The bylaw itself doesn't have to recap that. The enforcement schedules, there isn't an enforcement schedule here because, as you said, we already have bylaws that address violation of bylaws. So throwing everything into this bylaw is not, in my understanding, good practice of bylaw development. So there are reasons for some of those, those absences. I'd like to come back just briefly to the um, communication plan itself. And the structure of the plan is um, essentially okay, but we've got evaluation of a business licensing program taking place in July of 2019. It's completely premature to be evaluating anything at that point other than responding to the, um, some of the day-to-day -day issues that might arise. You want to have at least a year or two yeah. data under your mm. belt before you start evaluating the effectiveness of, of something like this. Um, so that's evaluation, talked a bit about enforcement. Um, I want to know whether, I want to know Raj's view on the impact of reducing the home-based business non-public access fee to zero. Do you think that would make this not tenable? And you don't have to offer an opinion uh, right now, but it's something I'd like an answer to. Because I, and I can't give you an answer on that. We don't have data on businesses on Bowen Island. So it is it is palatable. I mean, we put $50, there was a lot of discussion on that fee, and it was a nominal fee. It was a recommended nominal fee not to impose any hardship on any businesses. And, and, our, and our business fees are nominal in comparison to what other municipalities charge for business licenses. So if council so wished to reduce the fee for, and in fact it was a discussion in the email amongst the finance committee as well, uh, perhaps a small business where you don't have um, public coming in and out of the business could be charged zero dollars for business license. So I don't think it's, unpa it's not unpalatable from, from a finance perspective, if council so wish to have that change uh, put into the bylaw 
relative to zero dollars. And we can analyze and report back on, uh, on that at a later date. I don't think it's going to make a significant difference okay. to the projected um, cost of the program. I think it would make a really significant difference in the degree of compliance. And it would give us, I mean, when EDC looks at businesses, we have either 200 or 1,300. Yeah, and between the 200 and the 1,300, where they got the number, I don't know from that. that that's the province's best guess. Yeah. The province's best guess. But we actually would begin to be able to figure out mm -hmm. something real there. Mm -hmm. So I would like to. Mm -hmm. go ahead. Can I just make. Sure. As a former, well, my husband was a former owner of a business, renting a storefront operation and paying rent and therefore having to meet all the Vancouver Postal Health requirements and everything else. Um, one of the unfairnesses that several of us noticed in home and storefront businesses was home-based businesses flying totally under the radar of all the regulations and competing and not having to pay all the other fees. So those home-based businesses, to be fair to the storefront businesses, need to be licensed. And I think if we're going to process something, I reduce the $50 to 25 but I don't think it should be free. I have to agree with Allison because on the, on the other hand, on the equity issue, because mm -hmm. if you do have somebody who's running a bookkeeping business, for instance, from their home, but they don't have customers coming to the business, and you have somebody who's running a storefront, <coughs> why does this person get to do it out of their home for nothing, whereas I am, because I have people coming in to my storefront bookkeeping business, I'm having to pay a business license, so keep it nominal, but... Just drop it. No. Yeah. May I just ask one technical question? If we had to pass this, this is for second and third, is what we're being asked to agree to. Now, here's my question. What then discussion takes place before we go to fourth? Because if we're going to move ahead, and I, I think that this is the same as my and I were talking about before. Great points have been mentioned. The, the, the correspondence we've had, the comments we've had have been thoroughly worthwhile. Okay, second and third. And then, then what is the option for discussion or any improvements, changes, refinements before it goes, uh, before it's finally adopted? I'm happy to move this along. I just want to know that I'm, what I'm not doing, in fact, is rubber stamping and approving this right the way to fourth reading at this stage. I'd like to know that we have some method before yeah. fourth reading of, of, of any other great points or stuff that we've discovered to be incorporated. Is, is that going to happen? Is that possible? My question. Daniel's so. We can reread it a first, second, or third time anywhere along the piece until we get to fourth reading. Right. So that was the question I was asking. If we only gave it second reading, what is it that anybody would want to see change between now and third reading? Um, so we can change it, and we can amend it any time after it's been passed, because we are learning as we go. And so on that point, I think just to be, for safety's perspective, we should make uh, recommendation two um, into two separate recommendations, one that bylaw be read a second time, and then point three would be that bylaw 465 be read a third time, and as amended in both of them. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and then you have the choice of whether you vote for it for second or vote for it for second and third. Yeah. There's also no need to give it third reading at this point. I mean, that's no, well, it just gets in the long it process. Is, well, it, what it basically says is, hey, we're pretty happy with this. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case. So, but again, I'm going to vote against it anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> you can just but, carry on and do whatever the heck you want. But, it's, it's, uh, but, but I, I but think I'd like some to of us around now. the table yeah. are happy yeah. enough to see it go forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let, I, uh, I'd like to... to um, well, Maureen was going to make an event, a motion before I... Well... I don't think it has to be a motion. It can it just be considered as part of the amendments that were approved? Well, okay, but to change the fifty dollar fee to twenty five. I'm I'm agreeable to that. I just want to bring it down. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Twenty five. Yeah. As part of the process of the amendments. Who's that? That's not worth the cost of processing no. the postage stamp. No, 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 stamps. Do it online. But anyway. Um, the question becomes, as a, from a process and procedural perspective, 
do we have to move every amendment um, to the bylaw if we're giving the bylaw a second and third reading and we know that there are amendments such as the fee structure or enforcement or whatever, or do you go through with it as it is now and send it back to staff to say, based on our discussions, make further recommendations? I was taking it that the suggestions I made and this one that Maureen has just made that we've all agreed by consensus to amend the bylaw. And that's why Tyler will pick up in the discussion in a minute. So there was discussion, three amendments to the bylaw, da 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 da, and that will. So okay, on. if you're all comfortable, because if you're mm -hmm. talking consensus, yeah. you're not going to look at these point by point. You're, you're going to get a couple of surprises when you find out what you all agreed to by consensus, I bet. Uh, but well, go for it. Could we just go through the amendments and just review them so that everyone does sure. know what they're that many. Yeah. Okay. They're relatively modest. It's they're not this my big list. So the first one was 5H, adding back the reference to the Residential Tenancy Act. And 6 was to change is to begins. Um, 10 was to, ch to delete, um, shall be collected by, so it reads all fees should be payable to Bowen Island Municipality who shall deal with my glasses. Right, I wasn't actually referring to those ones, I was referring to the items of discussion. But. Well, the, okay, but the only item of discussion where we've actually changed anything is the $25. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everybody's feeling that all of this yeah. discussion, nothing yeah. really came yeah. out of it. And, okay. and the other items that we discussed, Allison, uh, 5I2, an operator of a retail or manufacturing business, business mm -hmm. yeah. or picking up items sold by the retail or manufacturing business. Item 6, the period of the annual license begins January the 1st. Yeah. And then under point 11, uh, in the form of forms as prescribed and under 16 uh, license period. And in the fee schedule, dropping the home-based business non-public access to $25? Yeah. Mm -hmm. From $50 to $25. Yeah. Yeah. And that was it in terms yeah. of the changes. There's one more that's outstanding here, and it says it's in the definitions nonprofit organization. It says there's a comment here definition to be provided by Alice. Um, yeah, just leave it the way it is. Okay, so that's not an amendment. Thank you. Yeah, and, uh, <clears throat> and then the other one is just the, the first bit there where we're going to add craft market, right? This the that's first part of the amendment we didn't mention craft market. I just want to make it clear that. Yeah, that was if anybody in, wants to discuss it, we can discuss it. That was in Daniel's it. resolution number one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Take that as All right. at this point. Okay. We've got, no. So I just have one question. Mm -hmm. This is perhaps, it seems the answers I've received so far alludes to the fact that we can deal with the threshold for very small businesses through, can you? An enforcement policy. An enforcement policy, <laughs> but if you're showing that you do not make profit, is that right? Is that what you were saying? Well, it says gain and profit, so one could argue, you know, but it also under the community charter, we don't have to enforce our bylaws. So the person selling eggs at their driveway? Well, it depends Maybe because that's a food and health and safety <laughs> issue. Okay, so here you go. This is, the, this is where I would like some clarification and where we seem to be getting the most feedback. So yeah, It's the small items, these small items that are going to give us, will make, you know, but there's a risk of tripping over significant stuff with these small, niggly details. And I do think we need to get some clarification. But if we make this really specific, then we're going to create a loophole for somebody to walk right through. Yeah. Yeah. And by having the enforcement policy, which if something comes up, we can... No. Oh, yes, well, that clearly we won't bother enforcing for that sort of thing. Okay. Just that it, um, I'm prepared to make the motion after this uh, that uh, staff report on the value or feasibility and feasibility of our enforcement policy yeah. to accompany this bylaw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to move the bylaw number 465 2018 be read a second time as amended. Second. Seconded. <coughs> and all in favor. Well, we, 
Aren't you going to read the part about the, the craft market? I thought we were just taking that by consensus that it was included along with all the other amendments. Okay. But you want me to? No, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then. Um, uh, so that and, and one opposed. So second reading it passed. And I will move that bylaw number 465 2018 be read a third time as amended. Second. Second for that. All in favor of a third reading. Okay. And those opposed? And uh, now I mean myself. Okay. Can I also, I would like to move yeah. okay. um, that uh, staff report on the uh, value and feasibility of an enforcement policy to accompany this body. Okay, we have a second for that. And, yes, we do. Yeah. And so, uh, any discussion before I take a question? Okay, all in favor? Okay. And that is passed as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, next. <laughs> Moving right along. Take a deep breath. Um, and we have. Where am I here? Uh, Daniel. Lot one, third reading. Oh. <laughs> Another fun thing. Maybe we should take a small break. <laughs> oh, I think this is going to, we'll break the back of it unless you need to. Uh, I think that this will break the back of what we're up to today. Um, I don't know, we've got one more answer. Yeah, there's more. Let's, I don't know. Let's, People want to take five minutes? Five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, done. Five minutes. Thank you. Are ready to roll, are we? Mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel, lots one, third reading. Oh, never mind. Quick. Thank you. So I have a number of slides that go over the um, sort of over this bylaw again, and so I'm going to give you this overview one, and then I have a number of other slides I can refer to, but I maybe won't present them all. I think everyone's fairly familiar with, with the bylaw, but essentially bylaw 432 is to amend the official community plan for lot one of the community lands, and it's to change it from rural to a combination of light industrial, rural residential, and village periphery. And then bylaw 433 is to amend the land use bylaw and create a CD zone, so comprehensive development. Um, 21 with four sub areas, so area one, the largest being light hey, industrial. Yeah. Slightly louder, slightly slower. Okay. <laughs> if you want me to hear it. You can move up. Look, yes, with all the hours. But that won't help the speed part. <laughs> Okay, so then area one, light industrial, um, a lot of light industrial uses, artisanal, retail, residential uses, all of principal uses. It'll, um, area two, residential with up to 20 homes. Um, area three proposed as rural residential, so essentially it's been designated as a land bank. And area four at the north end of Guild Creek is rural residential for one, one dwelling. Um, so these are the ones that go into it in detail. I'm just going to come back to good questions about it, and I'm going to pass over. So public comments, so we've received a total of 42 letters from 32 different people, and we had seven speakers at the public hearing, which was held over two days. Um, so they outline here, early feedback on the rezoning proposal, I think overwhelmingly centered on the need for residential use in area one. There were some minor comments around the periphery, but generally that was the principal um, comments that we got. And um, council at second reading um, amended the bylaw to allow residential use of the principal use in, in area one. Um, and then additional comments, I'd say probably our second most common comments about proposed light industrial use designation and permitted uses in area one. Um, some in support and some more to question maybe the, the need for it. That's probably our, our highest comment for those. Um, so a number of Bowen Island committees were referred to this rezoning for comment. So I'm just going to give an overview rather than the motions because most of them were referred to multiple times. So the APC at their final one. Um, did not support the light industrial uses and they wanted housing to be designated as a priority for lot one. So as I said, council then amended area one to include residential as a principal use. Um, and BIMTAC recommended reducing the parking requirements, um, which council made the amendment to. Um, and I'll say council also required the completion of a transportation master plan to be done prior to the approval of a subdivision um, in part because of BIMTAC's comments. And parks, trails, greenways. Um, recommended among other items by a physical hydrological study conducted for lot one and a 10 meter covenant placed on the southern boundary of lot one. Um, council required that a stormwater management plan be completed prior to the approval of any subdivision of the lot. The EDC supported light industrial uses, but they had concerns about the viability and access of area one 
worth providing light industrial uses. Um, the UDC also recommended restaurant be added as a permitted use in Area 1, and Council included that in the bylaw. Um, so that's essentially the overview of all my comments, and so we brought it forward um, for recommendation. So um, under our letters patent, before approving an OCP amendment bylaw, it needs to be referred to the Islands Trust. So um, our recommendation would be that the bylaw be given third reading, and bylaw 432 be referred to the Islands Trust. <coughs> Anyone have any questions for Daniel on the report? Okay, uh, can uh, I'll get a uh, reading of the uh, first before we uh, go to discussion. Uh, is anyone uh, to pass or move the recommendation? That's what I'm trying to say. Well, you can move it. Okay, do I have a seconder? So what have you moved? The bylaw. Uh, Maureen, Maureen moved the uh, uh, bylaw as uh, as, written. as written in the uh, agenda. Agenda. Thank you. <laughs> I'm fading your past. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking for the benefit of people watching, we need to read these things out loud. Mm -hmm. We never really. Uh, these are pretty comments from the disability coalition yeah. people. I'm just a bunch of numbers. I'm happy to read it. So the recommendation is that bylaw number 432-2017, cited as Bowen Island Municipality Official Community Plan Bylaw number 282-2010, Amendment Bylaw number 432-2017, be read a third time, and that bylaw number 433-2017, cited as Bowen Island Municipality Land Use Bylaw number 57, 2002 Amendment Bylaw number 433-2017 be read a third time, and that bylaw number 432-2017 be referred to the Islands Trust for approval consideration prior to consideration of adoption. Okay. So moved. So moved. A seconder? And I have a seconder, Allison. Okay. Uh, any discussion before I call the question on this? Uh, go to Allison and then Gary. I guess my biggest concern is not, I'm not sure that we got a lot of absolutely no, there shouldn't be any industrial once we added the word <coughs> residential, but more the comments about do we need it and what, and maybe the what kind of light industrial. Um, I know we need spaces for light industrial, and I think light industrial could be very benign. Um, you know, somebody who's got a little welding shop in their garage sort of fits in the definition of light industrial. The North Van is doing that proposal down behind the Second Narrows Bridge, Maplewood. which Maplewood Flats is that what? It, yeah, which is a mix of light industrial and. Um, residential. It's a great big huge lot um, and if without providing something, and we've been criticized for years by people who want to set up something that we're not welcoming to business because we don't have any pre-zoned areas. So because residential is a principal use, if the residential gets in there first and gets it built, then I'm not and there's no demand for the, any of the light industrial. We provided the opportunity, and I don't know where else we would go and provide it, because we don't necessarily have any other land that we can easily rezone. The one thought, spot that I thought we might be able to is, uh, I think, going to be used for cannabis growing. <laughs> no. The fellow that made the presentation at that public hearing. Hey, thank you. Uh, Gary? Yeah, my only comments, Maureen, as, you, as everybody knows, I was on the uh, Community Lands Committee and we, we thought of this as a really good idea and it's got historic value and, and, the, and all the rest of the stuff that goes along with it. I don't think it's that desirable place for actually for residential housing, but there's been enough feedback from the community. It, it's, it's the proximity to the cove that I don't think is essential to uh, light industrial activity. And um, there are some other areas on the island that 
could be concerted for light industrial, and I was talking to somebody about it the other day, which would fit in a lot better. We don't have to put it on municipal lands. Uh, it can go on private lands, there's no question about that, um, if, if we so desire. Um, so I, I, I'm in a big conflict here. I don't, uh, I want to see this um, rezone. I want to see the property rezone for a lot of reasons. We've got to move forward on it, but with the public feedback on the late industrial, I'd be happy just to uh, just to kick it down the road, redo it without the late industrial, and then, and then it'll be an absolute no problem. That's what I'm feeling. Can I, can I just jump in on that? I'd like to, to sort of respond to that. Um, We've been here for 40 years, all right? Private property owners do not apply for their land to be made light industrial for uh, other people to have small strata type businesses on it. It's not the best, the highest and best use of the land economically, and there's more money in residential. 40 years we've been waiting for this. Problem. We have almost no light industrial land on Bowen Island. And I'm thinking of the uh, Arlene Dickinson, her thing uh, at UBCM. I found that that, that was, do you want uh, a dynamic, welcoming, freestanding, sustainable community, or do you want to be a suburb of the closest big city? Right? If you want to be a suburb, then it's really easy. All you allow is residential, right? And then you're a suburb, period. Uh, you can have a little shopping center in your residential area. All suburbs have it. If you want to be a freestanding community, if you want to be dynamic, you want to welcome new people, you want diversity of people, you want to get something happening and, and be welcoming and inclusive, you have to have employment centers. You have to have places where these people that come along now and again, you will never get a whole bunch of people wanting to start their small business this Thursday, right? They come along this year, next month, three months down the road, this contractor would do something if he could get a bigger space. This guy would start doing that if he could find the space. And if you have a community that doesn't have the space, it never happens, he just moves on, goes to somewhere else, does it there. Um, and the other thing here is everybody envisions what this land will become based on nothing but their own imagination, right? The council of the day controls it. Absolutely, we own that land. It's community land. If somebody comes along and says, I want to build this factory down there, the council of the day says, well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that Factory's not light and dust. No, but we don't consider that appropriate for the site. Right? It's just that simple. The, what you're proposing is not. So, so nothing is going to happen on that land without the full without the agreement of the council of the day. Uh, and that's why I just, I, th I think it's really important that we don't visualize the bad thing that could happen that somebody's going to do, because it's not another owner. We're not giving anybody any power. We keep the power. They're going to go to Sue Ellen and then Maureen. Um, I'll be voting uh, against this motion. I'm uh, uh, still concerned about the things I've been talking about for uh, all the way through the process, as you probably know, but I'll just list them off quickly. I don't think there's a, um, the need has been expressed through uh, including um, the most latest workshop we've got the report on. I, uh, I don't think that an anything goes kind of zoning like we've got now. Uh, what kind of planning is that? That just means that a future um, council can do anything without more public input and uh, unless it's rezoned again. So, but, you know, I, I don't, this within anything goes rezoning, I don't know if it will be rezoned again. Um, I think we need to think about the future, five years down, 50 years down the road, 100 years down the road, and think about that little little parcel uh, area to there around the uh, works yard. Is that enough to set aside and reserve? Um, is that the best land, or is that something where we could meet future community needs that we don't know now? It's shady and it looks down on the works yard. I don't, it, it's small and it's sloped. I think um, we've got uh, to think about traffic issues there for uh, light industrial. Should we be putting that where there's school, children, trails, and uh, I just don't think that's compatible or, or thought out. 
I think we heard at the public hearing some other things about what's, what's that big building that's permitted by this going to look like? Is it going to dominate? Be bigger than uh, the pub? Bigger than VIX? Is it going to change the views? I think um, uh, we need comprehensive planning. And that's what we started to do um, with this mm -hmm. workshop. And uh, we started to think about all the Crown lands together and how could they uh, fit together. But by passing this bylaw, I think we uh, restrict what planning can happen by rezoning it ahead of the thinking and the uh, taking this um, information and ideas uh, into the process. So I'll be voting against this uh, motion. Okay, thanks. Maureen? No. I'll be voting in favor of the motion. I don't see this as an example of anything goes rezoning. And I think it, I see it as an example of enabling rezoning. If you look at, if you compare this lot to um, lot three and the list of permitted uses on lot three, they're, they're comparably broad. And we've got a report before us for the comprehensive.